Mongol leader Genghis Khan rose from humble beginnings and founded the largest empire in history. After uniting the nomadic tribes of the Mongolian plateau, he set out to conquer huge territories in Central Asia and China. His descendants expanded the empire even further, advancing to such far-off places as Poland, Vietnam, Syria, and Korea. At their peak, the Mongols controlled between 11 and 12 million contingent square miles. But what was he like personally? And what about the many wives he had? Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. He objectified women. Traditionally, Mongol marriages were meant to solidify clan relationships and strengthen alliances. It was custom to marry outside of one's clan group, and it was also tradition to abduct women from rival tribes in order to strengthen one clan group and weaken the other at the same time. Genghis Khan had several wives that he obtained in many different ways, including abducting them. He chose from women of the highest rank, and very beautiful women at that. He liked them with cute noses, rounded hips, long, silky hair, red lips, and beautiful voices. Ones that scored below a certain number were sent to the tents of his officers. On one occasion, his lieutenants were wondering what the greatest enjoyment that life afforded was. The debate was leaning toward the sport of falconry. Genghis owned 800 falcons when their leader offered his own point of view. The greatest pleasure is to vanquish your enemies and chase them before you, to rob them of their wealth and see those dear to them bathed in tears, to ride their horses and clasp to your bosom their wives and daughters, he announced. Geneticists have claimed that Genghis fathered more offspring than anyone in history. Empress Bort Bort, born in 1161 AD, was married to Khan at the age of 17. She was a skilled archer, mother of nine, her husband's most trusted advisor and loved by her people. While Khan was out conquering the world and creating one of the largest empires in history, she stayed in Mongolia, ruling with the wisdom of a stable and smart empress. However, like so many women before and after her, Bort didn't make her own choice to become an empress. When she was only 10 years old, her father, the leader of the Konirat tribe, got her engaged to the son of the Kyat Bordeshkin family, Temujin, who would later become known as Genghis Khan. They waited until they turned 17 to get married, and then Khan took Bort to live with him. According to historical records, this was the start of a stable, lifelong relationship that survived Khan marrying other women and having secret affairs. Bort endured it all to continue being a good empress. As his first wife, she advised him on many issues and conflicts, and he would rely on her wisdom to make tough decisions. Once Genghis' soldiers were done with the pillaging and the abusing, they brought Genghis himself the most beautiful women they encountered. These women alone would be spared from the antics of the conquering army, so they could be paraded in front of the man himself. The winner got the honor of becoming one of Genghis Khan's many wives, which was probably preferable to ending up as the loser, though ancient origins doesn't say what happened to them. Evidently, though, women who Genghis deemed not to be up to his standards of beauty were sent off with the soldiers to be abused and then discarded. So, yeah, great to be a woman in peacetime Mongolia when Genghis comes to town. You might just want to emigrate to China. He kidnapped women. Many people perished during the Mongol conquests. Historians put the number at somewhere around 40 million. Documents from the Middle Ages showed that the population of China plummeted by tens of millions during the Khan's lifetime, and people estimate that he may have killed a full three-fourths of modern-day Iran's population during his war with the Khwarezmid Empire. The Mongol attacks may have reduced the entire world population by as much as 11%. When Genghis' soldiers were done with the pillaging and abusing, they brought Genghis himself the most beautiful women they'd found. 
These women alone would be spared from the brutality of the conquering army so they could be shown. It wasn't great to be a woman in Genghis's time. No monogamy. There was no such thing as male monogamy in Genghis Khan's Mongolia. Men were allowed to have multiple wives, but women were only allowed one husband. Each one would have her own tent where she'd live with her own children, mainly so they wouldn't fight with each other. A man's first wife was considered his legal wife, so that made things a little bit less complicated from an inheritance perspective. The children of the first wife got more of his money when he died, which is a convenient rule for a man like Genghis, who had around 500 wives and so many children that he couldn't and didn't try to remember all of their names. Genghis Khan had at least 14 wives of high rank whose names we know, but the lesser wives were considered so insignificant that they'd been lost to history. Only the four sons of his first wife, Bort, were considered to succeed him. Genghis Khan is believed to be the most prolific patriarch in history, with an estimated 16 million descendants living today. He gave wives away. Mbakabeki was eldest daughter of curate leader Jaku Gambu, who allied with Genghis Khan to defeat the Naimans. Ibaka was given to Genghis Khan as a wife as part of the alliance agreement. She was the sister of Bek Tutamish, who married Genghis Khan's son Joshi, and Sorgak Danaki Beki, who married another son, Toliwi. But after about two years of childless marriage, Genghis Khan saw her as useless and abruptly divorced Ibaka and gave her to General Jurdachi, a member of the Uruwit clan, and who had killed Jaku Gambu after the latter turned against Genghis Khan. This was all done without her consent. Rashid al-Din Injami al-Tawarikh claims that Genghis Khan divorced Ibaka due to a nightmare in which God commanded him to give her away immediately, and Jurdehi happened to be guarding the tent, so he gave her away to the first man available. Genghis took a woman from each tribe he conquered as his own as a bounty. He kept some of the women given to him, but married off others to his commanders and subordinates. He used women as a way of negotiating diplomacy between clan groups, and even went on to negotiate the marriages of his own children. He loved some. Despite his brutality, he showed a lot of respect and love towards some of his wives, especially his first wife, Bort. His marriage with Bort was arranged by her father, Yesuji, when she was ten and he was nine years old. Bort's dowry was a fine black sable jacket. Soon after the marriage took place, three Merkids attacked their family camp at dawn and kidnapped Bort. She was given to one of the warriors as a spoil of war against her consent. Genghis rescued her several months later with the help of his allies Wang Khan and Jamuka. Bort was held captive for eight months and gave birth to son Joshi soon after she was rescued. There was a lot of doubt as to who the father was because her captor took her as a wife and could have gotten her pregnant. Despite this, Genghis Khan acknowledged Joshi as his own son. Bort had three more sons with Genghis, Chagatai, Ogedi, and Toliwi. If you enjoyed this video on the sad truth about Genghis Khan's wives, click the like and subscribe button for more crazy history stories where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history.